Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Titusville CRA meeting of May 14th, 2019 at 530. We have a quorum. I will call this meeting to order. First order of business is an invocation. I see no ministers. So please join me in a moment of silence. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business, approval of minutes. I'll accept the motion. So moved, sir. Second. Okay, the motion is for the April 9th, 2019 meeting. Yes. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. Yes. Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Second item is special recognitions and presentations. None, sir. sir. Hmm? We have none. Okay. Oh, correction, we do have one. <laughs> I was saying, I wonder what Edie's doing here. <laughs> Let me get in rhythm here. <laughs> At the uh, April 2019 CRA meeting, the economic director, uh, Edie McCall, provided the agency a report on the city's economic development and promotional activities for the past two quarters. <coughs> CRA requested that Ms. McCall come back to the May CRA meeting with promotional ideas for the CRA to consider. Ms. McCall will present several ideas that are included in your packet for your discussion. Thank you, sir. Ms. McCall? Thank you. Okay, um, in your packet, I've included four different ideas. So if we could just start with the first one and, and I'll just run through them. Okay. Um, the first was to publish the CRA's annual report as a marketing tool itself. I know we have the Titusville Talking Points, which is a great marketing tool that I use constantly. Um, the CRA annual report could be used in a similar, in a very similar fashion. And I included uh, an example of a CRA in Boynton Beach that uses their uh, annual report as a marketing tool. Also, we could include available retail space. We could do some special marketing on um, empty buildings in the area, you know, that type of thing. So there's some things we could do um, with that uh, annual report that I think would be beneficial for the area. And I put an estimated cost here. Um, and there's other annual reports that you could also take a look at from the Florida Redevelopment Awards 2018 Best Book. Um, okay. I want to discuss them one at a time, I assume. Okay. okay. Council, anyone have any comments or questions for Ms. McCall? Go right ahead. I rather like that idea of the annual report. And when I originally read it, I was sort of, yeah, but the more I think about it, you could turn around and say things like, this is how many people are coming into the Playhouse. Uh, we need to support the Playhouse. Uh, we need restaurants downtown. These are the areas that are available. You know, this is contact number, contact these people. And I think that might get some interest. I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but and I just sort of thought, hmm. Any other comments? None at this time. When we hear all of them, we can come back and, and, okay. and uh, go right ahead. Okay, the second one. Um, promoting the City of Titusville's trail marketing plan. Uh, I included the entire marketing plan, but the area of the marketing plan that I wanted to draw your attention to was the billboards on I-95. Um, <clears throat> and specifically advertising exit 220. I uh, put an estimated cost there, and um, I will add that I did attend uh, um, with Tim Ford the downtown merchants meeting on May 1st and just presented some ideas to that group because they are our businesses downtown and just wanted to get a little bit of buy-in from um, that organization 
and they were on board with some type of billboard campaign, um, specifically advertising exit 220 and the downtown uh, area. I, I'll comment on that. Um, I'm not sure uh, what the status is because there's been a lot of changes and I'm no longer on the t uh, Tourist Development Council, but there was a time in the not too distant past that uh, they did billboards up and down 95 and we participated with them and so we got much better prices and actually I think they paid for most of it because they had different things from different areas of the, uh, the county. So that might be something, if we decide to go with that, you might want to contact the TDC and see what their present disposition is on it. Okay. So I did do that. I did uh, contact the TDC, <laughs> and they are presently, they do have a billboard campaign. There's two Titusville uh, billboards, neither of which advertise any exits. Mm -hmm. It's just... Uh. Um, um, a space uh, suit, and it says Space mm -hmm. Titusville. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure that that is something that, unless we have control over what well, they put on that billboard. We generally let, uh, let people involved have uh, input as to what they wanted on it. So I'm not sure what they did mm -hmm. on this one. I've never uh, seen it, and I've been here four years now. I've never seen any kind of input or asked to be, you know, that type of thing. So. Well, this was sometime in the past, so okay. I, I couldn't tell you exactly when it is. But I, I used to get the, in fact, I still have some of them. It was a miniature billboard that I would bring in, and everybody would get a, a look at it and have different comments at, at that point. But, again, I'm not, you know, not sure what's going on, but... Um, Certainly, I would think they would accept uh, discussion. Uh, the, you have to go to the marketing committee with it, though. But okay. you know, start start with the uh, the director, and then he'll tell you how, what the present procedure is. So, and it's it's just one of the th the possibilities. I'm not saying it's the, this group uh, the council is going to go with that particular thing, but if they do, I just want to give you the information. So, uh, Member Jordan. Yeah, that sounded good, but my concern is you're advertising for downtown, and if no one's open, we are, we're going to have patrons who are disappointed that they're coming downtown and no place to go. So if the merchants are excited about this, the next step is to tell them they have to be open <laughs> for business. <coughs> you know, it's, it's, to me, it just makes sense. You, you just can't market and say, come downtown, and there's nothing to do. You're not going to comment on that, are you? I know you won't. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments? All right, go ahead with the <laughs> next item, please. Okay. Um, the next one is walkyourcity.org. This is an interesting program. Um, a company has uh, marketed uh, signs that you can make, that you put in your downtown area, and you're promoting people to walk to certain places or to cycle to certain places, and they're very easy to put up. I know we've been a little concerned about sign pollution when communities put too many signs up and it doesn't aesthetically look very nice. So this might be a way to put signs up in your downtown area to get a feel if, if people are even looking, using, get feedback. I'm sure people will comment on our Facebook page and that type of thing and, and just kind of see if this is a exercise that... Uh, our citizens like and it's it's inexpensive it's easy to put up and take down it's so just an idea any comments I see none at, at this point but, uh, next item okay and the last item was in the economic development strategic plan that RMA put together and this is a uh, program based on uh, community pride in our businesses that are downtown, putting a face with a business, helping draw people to those businesses downtown. 
and um, it's called Real Faces of Downtown Titusville, where you basically interview business owners, and you can do banners, you can do videos, you can help uh, each company market their business. Uh, it's just paying a little more attention and doing a few more uh, marketing campaigns for each individual business downtown. And that estimated cost would depend on how, how, how much we did. Any comments? Oh, yes, we do. Member Jordan. I thought the chamber was already doing that. I thought the chamber was already doing that, right? So, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm concerned about is the fact that if you're downtown, you really don't know what stores are down there. So why don't we have some big billboard or something that says, here are the stores that's down there so they know what to look for? Well, we do have a directory sign. I, I know you have that small directory. Okay. But you're trying to draw people there, right? So you need to have something before you get downtown. You know what I'm saying? That what's going to make me come downtown? Unless I decide I'm going to go downtown, and then you see I look at the directory, and then I'll say I'm going to go there. It's just like the mall. People know there's a mall, so they're going to go to the mall, and then they'll look at the directory. We say we got a downtown, but I don't know what's down there, and I don't know what's open. You know what I'm saying? It's just it, it's, you're, you're causing the patron to work too much, but you want them to come here. You know, business wants to draw people so that they can make money. So you got to be able to draw them by giving them something to look forward to before they get down there. You're talking about the, billboard, the billboards. Well, the billboard needs to say these are the things that are downtown. And oh, by the way, I don't want to come downtown if I find out I got there and it's closed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we've got a problem. We've got a challenge. Because one of the things that I believe is the biggest challenge of our downtown is the fact that we can't park on the road. That really bothers me, because when, when, you, when we were able to park on the road diagonally, in my mind, it tells people there's something going on. When you've got parking behind the stores, you're looking for foot traffic, and you don't see that much, right? And with the way we are configured, we're driving downtown. We're just going. You know, we're kind of lazy. You know, we don't like to park anywhere behind a place, we want to park right where the place is. And I think that's how Winter Garden and the others are successful because you can park pretty close to where you want to go. Does that make sense? In my mind, I think we should just reconfigure US-1 and get us back to where we were with the, dry, the, the parking right on the road. That's my opinion. OK. Now we can discuss it. <laughs> Um, Vice Chair, you're next. Um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, the effort into your promotional ideas is, is clear. And um, I hesitated earlier on to say what Member Jordan had said, but I've said for three years, it doesn't matter how good our promotions are if there's nothing there when we get there and they're closed. So I, I, I can get in a lot of trouble with people for that, but I don't know how else to say it. Um, I think the point has been made that we're not sure what's there, and we sure aren't sure when they're going to be open. Uh, I use this example. My wife has some shops down there she really likes, but she doesn't get off of work till 4.30 and can't get there in time to stroll down and enjoy it and, and go to these two or three shops down there that she really likes. I mean, you know, every time there's a Friday Night Lights, she's going because they're going to be open. I mean, I can't tell you how significant that is. And I'm saying this to you, knowing that, you know, you're doing all the promotion and you can't tell people how long they have to be open. But when I, I see her, hey, we're going to Friday Night Lights, and it's because they're open. That's a big deal. So as, as good as these ideas are, and I, too, I liked um, uh, the, um, excuse me, the, I got it written down here, the one from Boynton Beach. The, um, the annual report, um, I, I wrote it, I wrote it so fast I can't read it. <laughs> but anyway, I like the annual report. I liked what Member Nelson said. 
Uh, you can add to it. I like the things you said about kind of, it would be a good idea what's open, when it's open, uh, give an idea of some of the vacant buildings that could be purchased. I just think it's a very good informational thing, and I totally agree with you uh, that the Titusville Talking Points is a huge hit, whether it be the video or the magazine. If you played <clears throat> off of that, I think that's a not real expensive, dedicated amount of money that is unrealistic for what we're hoping to get. So I think if we start with this sort of thing, like we have with the Titusville Talking Points, how cool is it when I go to my Parks and Rec meeting, I show the video and they show complete, complete, complete. That's what I'd like to see in the CRA and that they stay open. Thank you, sir. Uh, Member Ball. Um, thank you, that's a great idea. Uh, I think um, leveraging and, 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 and sort of coming uh, connecting to products that we already have to maybe uh, implement a few of these ideas um, it might might be a way to go like the walk in your city I, I, I think that's something that could be um, you know coupled in with other materials that, that are already done and on the website and such um, and you know we certainly could have something that was tailored to um, hit all the high points of, of downtown historic and, you know, attractions and everything else. So um, I wanted, I did have one question for you. I, I thought the Boynton Beach product was just a spot on perfect. Now, granted, they have a lot more money and they have a staff, <laughs> I said, they have a staff of 10, they have 12 times the tax increment that we have. So yes, they've got money to invest in this, but the principles are the same. So what I see in their product is a very strategic, proactive product that's trying to get the message out about what's happening in the downtown. Um, I think that we all were um, very highly impressed with our annual report this year and, and almost think, wow, this is, why are we keeping this a secret? So I, I don't know how it gets distributed right now, and I don't know if you had any thoughts about either because you talked with somebody or in your own mind. Who, who would you distribute this product to? Well, any of the developers that come and meet yeah. with the city to start off. So it's a multi-audience sort oh, of tool, yeah. including sure. just you know, generating a buzz about what's going on in downtown from an outside investor standpoint. And depending on how it comes out, we could do something similar in the talking points like we do the annual report every January. There could be an insert that gets pulled out as well. You know, kind of an annual thing that we put in the talking points so you get the benefit of both. Yeah, I, 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 and I would share the sentiments about signage that, that, that we've heard. If, if, you, if you don't know what you're putting the sign out to get people to go do, then um, that's probably not a good idea, or you're, you're promoting something that might not be available when they get here. That's it. Member Stokel. All right. So thank you, Edie. I think I know for me personally, this is exactly kind of what I was looking for, are very diverse um, options for us. I will go back to Member Jordan. I'm with you on the diagonal parking. I don't know if that's feasible, but I agree. I think if you're driving, you see an open spot, oh, let me just stop for a quick coffee or let me just pull in real quick. I think it does um, slow down our downtown. It makes it easier for people to walk. Um, agreement with you guys with the annual report. I think the talking points has been phenomenal just when talking to citizens and showing them what we're doing. I think it's, it's a great and very um, relatively inexpensive tool that we could use. Same thing, billboards, I, I think it's a little pricey and maybe premature at this time. Walk your city, I watched the video, I, I think it's a great idea. They're inexpensive, you can change them out if a new business. Um, at the Sea Turtle Festival this past weekend, I ran into one of my friends, he's like, oh, I'm gonna be playing my guitar over at McSuites and it just made me think of, do people know how to get to McSuites? Do they know that he's gonna be over there? But there's a sign that says, you know, five minute walk that way. Um, I, I think it would be beneficial to the downtown area. And then uh, the highlighting a different business, I, I think it's kind of pricey, um, and I don't know if it's needed just yet at this point. So that's kind of, I'm going for the cheaper options at this point, I guess. <laughs> so. Member Leedy. I've never been so excited on, as I am on the thank you for 
taking our suggestion and coming back. This is outstanding. Uh, this is what I've kind of been asking for for a while. Um, I agree with the Boynton Beach comments on that. Uh, walk your city. Uh, I know over the years, I know Walt was extremely uh, involved in it years ago on the billboards. I'm not a real believer in them. The last time, I'm not sure. There, there's, there was really no way to, you make the investment, does it work? And, and I think we had a problem, remember Walt was telling, we had a problem because the one of the billboards was up by the rest stop and it, what, so, I'm, you know, I could be talked into it, but I'm not sure. Um, but I just want to thank you. That's, this is just really what we need to do. And I think this small amount uh, incrementally to promote our city, I'd like to give you three suggestions, and, and, and I think I brought it up last time if it's helpful. M most of you know my wife, and she's a realtor, and, and that is not the city's website, but we should have somebody go to the city, to the realtor, someone from the city, and I'm sure the realtors will do that, and put the city's website on theirs as a link. She's telling me more and more people, she's with Coldwell Banker, which is national. She's got one right now, came in from Ohio, found it, Coldwell Banker, Titusville, boom. And that person in Columbus, Ohio, would see the Titusville website. So all they have to do is hit on it and would talk about Titusville. And so if you can get a, and I'm sure the realtors will allow you to put that link on their websites and you could go to everyone in town. So that might be a suggestion. Uh, number two that she's told me over the years, and maybe I've missed it on our annual reports, you guys, but every time she gets someone like this coming from Ohio, he, she takes them to the beach. She takes people from Orlando to the beach and they look at her and didn't even know it existed. Didn't know that was out there. So maybe on some of our city, let's get a picture of Play Linda um, from a helicopter or whatever they have. But that just blew me away. And once they see that beach, that's another marketing selling point. And then the last thing is, on, back to the billboards on my notes, I'm not so sure that we want to market or worry about right now to like billboards for the east coast of Florida, you know, driving up 95. We want the 45,000 people in our city to come downtown. We need to start with them first. And, and I, I, trying to over in my mind playing it, how do we get high school, younger people down in this area on a Friday night or a whatever. So that's my thoughts on this. So sounds like I'm negative on the billboards. I kind of am, but the rest of it, I love it. And, and if you want to take those suggestions, I think that link on the website of Realtors will. Since everybody is okay, I'm going to take my turn. <laughs> Um, and, and then we'll go to the others that are up again. Uh, I'm not convinced on billboards either. They, this was years ago, and it was uh, effective at the time, without question, but the world uh, changed, and uh, in the TDC, we went to the electronic media. Uh, it, it seems to me there's two things we're trying to do here, and, and uh, they aren't necessarily compatible in the way we do it. And one is to attract people into the downtown area, regardless of where they come from. And certainly the local people, uh, we would hope they come down, but as has been pointed out, they have to have something to come to when no one to do it. Um, and uh, so that, that's one area. The second would be to attract people from the outside. And again, we have that same problem but one of the ways that was very effective with the TDC was when we got into the electronic media, and there's all kinds of things that you can 
that people just go to TripAdvisor and, and some other things. I don't even know all of them. I'm not really that much into it. But uh, that tell whoever happens to be going on the highway or something else, if they see a Titusville sign, exit, they'll just punch it up. The kids will do it and say, oh, look, they have this, they have that. Uh, you know, they have a park, they have an ocean, whatever it uh, is. And I, I think it's rather reasonable to uh, expense, uh, the expense on it is, is somewhat reasonable because it's electronic and, uh, you know, they're, they're doing it with many towns and so forth as well. But when you go by, so you might want to look at that area. The other thing that I got from uh, reading this was we are trying to entice people to come in and open new stores. And that's a whole separate thing. And the, the, the uh, suggestions on the realtors, I think, are, are, are very good. And, but that's got to be specific to them. So we're, we're actually trying to do two different things. And I say keep that in mind with your, with your promotions, that one is to get the town uh, moving and, and people interested in coming to it, the, the uh, uh, consumer. And the other is if we can entice someone to come in and open a store, uh, that helps the whole situation of reasons for people to come downtown. So those are my suggestions. Now I'll go back to uh, Member Nelson. You're next. I was, thank you. I was just going to add, I didn't, um, I wasn't crazy about the walk your city, not because I don't think it's a good idea. But I understand our historic board is doing a walk your city um, already. And we're walking our city, but we only have like five stores downtown. So that seemed like that we were premature on that and seemed like we needed to get the businesses in before we started really hammering in on this is what we have. So that was just my thought. Sure. Uh Next is Member Jordan. I think, actually, Mr. Mayor, you said everything that I want, I was thinking about anyhow. Should so I, the first time through. I know, that's for sure. But, um, you know, I, I certainly agree with Member Nelson, and I think we're all alluding to the fact we want the CRA to grow. Uh, we love the, the people who are down there. But I've said all along, you know, it is really the city's responsibility to make sure that downtown actually grows. And we have to do our part by, you know, maybe being an impetus for something, um, a lightning rod for something in order for this to happen. Because if you, if you depend, there is no development of downtown, if you will, with the entrepreneurs who are downtown. They don't, none of them get together, any of them get together and say, you know what, this is what I want our, our downtown to look like. Let's go and find entrepreneurs that it's going to make sure that that happens. So in my mind, because downtown is our responsibility, I just think that we, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about it later on, we need to be that lightning rod to um, get the stuff done. So as far as um, the report, the uh, end of the year report, that's really good. You talked about the developers. It was alluded to about the realtors, and that's one of the other areas we can definitely um, get some of these reports into their hands because they do talk a lot, for sure. And they, they are always the one that have the new people come in. And a lot of times, you know, these people are coming in, uh, they know a whole lot more than us citizens know about our town, for sure. I certainly like the idea of, um, even though it's not downtown, we do have this wonderful treasure called Playa Linda Beach that we all forget about. And that's, to me, is, is a, could be a big draw. We are getting a store that's, you know, going to um, be selling these beach wares and everything, and maybe we should play that up even more to ensure that people do come downtown. There was a question about what do we do with these young people? Well, these young people want to have something to do. If they come downtown, I mean, there's not even a swing. You know, you think about it. We just need to, we've got to do more, and we've got to be stronger about, um, you know, pushing our agenda as, just making downtown as strong as possible. And you can't depend on the entrepreneurs that we have now. Not that they're not interested, because I believe they're interested in making money, but their you know, purpose of a business is to make money, and you gotta be open to do it. But if a patron, just like we had that um, Saturday um, Small Business Day, 
Uh, there weren't many stores that was open downtown, and that was a great opportunity for the businesses to make money. There was only one or two stores that was open for sure. So, But great report, and uh, I, I think I'm with everybody else. We need to uh, maybe look at, at the, um, the end of the year report, but the billboard thing I think is definitely premature. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, something came to mind when you were talking about the swing. We have a whole park with swings and things for kids to do and a splash pond, a splash park, and so forth. That's something that would draw people in, even local people, that may not even know it's there. And, and as was said, sometimes th something can be there right in front of everybody, but they just don't ever recognize it for some reason. So that might be something you want to include in there because that would draw people in. Uh, certainly the, the splash pad and all that is, is, is a big thing. And I, kids played on all those swings and, and things over there. So I think that's something adding to it. But one other thing, though, you just said the swing, but I'm thinking about teenagers and those. Well, they got, we got the, the, uh, the, the boards, the skateboard area back there, and that, that's the teenagers that are over okay. there doing that. Maybe I'm just too old. I was Maybe you didn't know it was there. <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See? That's why I'm here. No, I'm not, I'm not faulting you. I'm yeah. saying it, it's easy because it's out of the way. And mm -hmm. So we really need to let people know that those need things need to market are there. it more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Um, Member Stokel. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped you. Kurt, you were next. I'm sorry. Um, just to follow up on the realtor, um, the packet that you gave us last month, I took that home and my wife told me, she said, there should be those in every real estate office in Titusville. She didn't even know those existed. And those realtors would be more than happy to promote the city that way and hand that kind of stuff out. I mean, they're trying to sell, as you know, and developers also. So um, I don't know if <clears throat> that's another thing. You go around, heck, I'd even help. Give me 20 and I'll go to the real estate offices and have them put them on their coffee tables, you know. And, and uh, so um, finally, let me say, I hope this doesn't fall off the pier after tonight. I hope next month we get some kind of update or an idea or a, something to act on. Uh, I'm sure all of us would agree to that instead of, so thanks, thanks. Member Stokel. Okay, so to touch just what was happening about the skate park, that's where I like the walk your city signs because I think that would be perfect in downtown, five minute walk to the splash park, 10 minute walk to the skate park. Those, that's how I'm envisioning it, not just necessarily for that one strip yeah. of stores, but go to the theater, go to the Sandpoint Park. That's kind of how I was visioning it. And then I don't know, the next item on our agenda is preliminary budget, so I don't know if that's where we can see if we wanna kind of include some of these items. Any other comments? I see no lights lit, thank you very much. And you, you got a, a, a lot of things to look at at this point. Uh, Next item, as was said, the whole business is preliminary budget, sir. At the April 2019 Community Redevelopment Agency meeting, the CRA provided direction relating to the drafting of the FY 2020 CRA budget. The deadline to submit the draft CRA budget to the City Finance Department Budget Office was 6 May 2019. Staff provided this preliminary budget update to the CRA as the city's budget process is underway. Mr. Ford's available to answer any questions that you may have to accept this preliminary budget update. Mr. Ford, you? Just waiting for any questions. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's we're... pretty much right, the same have, as you've seen the last two months. Um, so, you know, number wise, um, we have the. Uh, CRA trail town amenities that could include the things such as the walk your city signs. So. Member Stokel. Yep. I guess that was going to be my question. Would these items that we just discussed, the annual report and the walk your city, would these come out of the CRA budget or our general fund? We'll, we'll put the annual report in the general fund. Okay. But I think the amenities the that 
okay. like walkable in the city, the actual structures we'll put in the CRA budget. Perfect. As Tim said, as a trail town amenity. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Member Nelson. I have a picky uni item. Um, picky uni item. That's, that's what my father used picky to uni. say. Picky uni. Um, You've never heard that. <laughs> okay. We have charging stations downtown. Can we put signs saying, you know, these spots are for electric vehicles, charging station, whatever, so that other people, I guess that's really a cabin. No, there's no signs. Yeah. We have the sign on the charging station itself, and to anybody that has an electrical vehicle, they know what it is. But, yeah, we've heard some people ask or request that or say that they're – Possibly could be some signs uh, that say that it's electrical vehicle charging station spots. So what um, be nice. we, we would have a hard time enforcing um, Somebody parking in a charging station. So what we've looked at in other cities as best practices Some of them paint the actual parking space green or some of them There's a charging symbol sign now that says green to discourage people from parking in yeah. that space because it looks different than the other spaces. Now, if the parking lot's crowded, that's where the overflow occurs, and that's what most people in other cities right, have okay. said. Even though you attempt to do that, um, there's really no way to enforce it. Okay. Parking. Would you, would you like for us to take a look at figuring out a, some kind of either on painting the pave, or pavement itself? Either painting or a sign. Please. Thanks. Member Ball. I just have a question because I, I and I appreciate the update and the information. It didn't really change, right? From um, and, and I know uh, if if I'm wrong that it did change, you can you can correct me. But the um, the caveats there um, are when just give us an estimate. When when are we going to have better resolution on what we think the tax increment is going to be based on? the property appraiser's office. The, usually it's by the end of this month that we'll get the first preliminary estimate of the tax taxable values. From that, we can take what our existing uh, millage rate is and give us an estimate of what the TIF will be. But then through the budget process, once we find out what the city council will do with the uh, millage rate, then we can fine tune it. So it will be going through the rest of the summer up until right. September till we actually right. know what that millage rate is going to be. And the same right. thing goes with the county. Uh, I've had a year where at one time the county changed the millage rate at the very last hearing in September. Right. So, but we can only go by what estimates we have as we go further along and we find out that information. And we will update you that in, our, in, well, in think, the city manager's report. Yeah, just because we had, uh, we had a couple of items that I think when we went through this last meeting, we said, gee, you know, it'd be nice to add some more money onto this, but we've got a great balance. Let's kind of stick with this, and then we'll get another bite at the apple. We're just not sure when that's coming, mm -hmm. but the, the promotional and marketing ideas are, you know, in that category of uh, member leading. Maybe yet we might still be able to find a little bit more to put onto that 4000 bucks, but... Um, and Member Ball, just, just uh, as the timeline for the budget, Tim talked about the actual process. We'll get some pretty firm numbers in June that we'll lock in. Um, the proposed budget will be published for the CRA and City Council in July. And what we do is we give City Council and you a, a month to kind of peruse that document, and then we start the budget hearing process in August. Great. Thank you. I, I'm going to jump in here, if you don't mind, for one second. You're, you'll be next. Uh, member lady, but uh, this is kind of part of the budget thing, but something that I'm thinking about from the, the, the last part uh, for Edie there. We also have things downtown that do stay open and, uh, you know, several museums uh, that could be included, in, and that's something that people very often like to see. We, ha we have a space museum. We have the Pritchard House. Uh, we have the Downtown Heritage Museum. And we have a space walk of fame that's in the parks. And I know that people come and see that all the time because I see them from where I live all the time. So I think those are things that will attract people in as well. So put those on the list, if you will. Member Leedy. If we adopted some of those things that we just discussed, what 
part of the budget would we We'll plan to take uh, the Boynton Beach proposal. That will go into the general fund because we want to try to make sure that our marketing is all together and not put into the CRA budget. And then the trail amenity items that you, you discussed will be done through the uh, trail line item. Okay. Well, I just one last bite at the apple. You <laughs> sure you guys want to spend? It just jumps out at me at $106,000 for uh, street resurfacing, but which I always wanted to be a little less, but <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, anything else from anyone on that subject? Next item, new business. Uh, Do you want the city manager? Ready for the next item? Yes, sir. The owners of the property located at 723 Palm Avenue, the Benjamin Warren Jr. Family Trust, are requesting that the structure at, at that property be designated into the city's historic registry of places. The Historic Tre Preservation Board will set a public hearing date at their May 6, 2019 meeting to consider the request later this year after the, the board reviews and accepts the report from the city's Historic Preservation Office. And staff requests that you accept the historic nomination application 1-2019 to nominate the Gibbons Rivers House at 723 Palm Avenue into the city's historic registry of histor historic places. And just to follow up, the, uh, the Historic Preservation Board set a July 1st date for the public hearing at their July 1st, that's a Monday afternoon, uh, for the uh, uh, public hearing. And then it will come to city council on July 23rd with a presentation at the 5:30 portion of the meeting, and then uh, the action by the council at the 6:30 uh, portion of the meeting. Okay. Um, just lost my place. Are we we down to B at this point? Okay. I'm going to use my uh, prerogative as chair and ask that we switch C and B. Uh, do C first, uh, and you'll, I think you'll see the, the reasons. I did have one more member up here. Did you have something else to say, or did I just forget the question? Okay. Yes, sir, if you could um, take a vote to accept the pre okay. budget for us. Uh, All right, yes, I'll accept the uh, motion. To accept the budget. No, the, uh, no, the uh, historic designation. Move to accept the historic nomination application HB. HPB number 1 2019 to nominate the Gibson <laughs> Rivers House at 723 Palm Avenue onto the city's register of historic places. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed like sign? Yes. Passes unanimously. Now, uh, I would like to switch B and C. Go to C first. I don't know if that requires a, a vote. Yes. Uh, can I have a motion on that? Can I make a motion to switch votes? I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> I make a motion. Uh, do I need to read what the... No, so just okay. say I, I need to B switch to C. Uh, C with B and address C before we go to B. Second. I have a motion and, and a second from Member Stokel. She got in by a hair. It was wow. there. <laughs> Okay, uh, if you will introduce item yes, C. Yes, sir. At the April down boy, down boy. 9th, 2019 CRA meeting, the board authorized Member Jordan to meet with staff and discuss ideas to attract uh, development and people downtown. Member Jordan and staff met on 17 April 2019. Based on the meeting, staff has requested an advisability to solicit a request for <laughs> development interest on three parcels strategically located in the downtown for public-private partnership in construction of a mixed-use development consisting of retail, commercial, and multifamily residential. An example of this type of commercial development envisioned is the uh, Plant Street Market and Winter Garden, and we have those items attached for your consideration. Any responses to the request for development interest will be brought to the CRA for advisability to move forward with the strategy to develop the targeted properties. With that, uh, we request your advisability to tell us which way you'd like to go. I'm, I'm just going to kind of introduce uh, why I s asked for them to be switched. 
uh, what we have what we have been talking about uh, is bringing people to uh, to downtown and how to do that and how to keep it open and so forth and so on. When we did the uh, the three of us actually we did the trip over to Winter Garden to see the the uh, trail over there and so forth, we didn't get to go into it because it, it wasn't open that particular day, um, as I recall. I don't know, I don't remember going into it, but it, uh, they have something of this type over there, and as as you see the pictures there, it is something that attracts people in because. <laughs> Part, part of it is, is like a uh, farmer's market. Part of it is uh, people uh, selling certain wares and things. And that's something that people like to see because they can go around and it's like a flea market and they can go and watch and, and see it. Whereas the other project is uh, somewhat more static and it's, it's more for um, a, a gathering of local people, I guess. so. With, with that, we'll just go right into this one uh, here for the rest. Uh, Member Jordan. Uh, yes, sir. I, I appreciate the council allowing me to um, sit with staff, and we had a really good uh, meeting discussing um, this. And as I said previously, um, we are responsible. And in order for us to um, help people get downtown, because I, I, I can visualize us having a very vibrant downtown, but the city needs to be the leader in making sure that happens. And as the mayor is saying, actually, I went in this building um, uh, actually with the ex-mayor. Um, and it was kind of interesting to see what was going on there because it was alive. And you're right, it had so many different types of things going on. It was almost like a flea market on steroids, if you ask me. <laughs> um, because I, I actually drove down US-1 and I was surprised that jumping flea market is They've got a lot of people going down there now. Even though the buildings are dilapidated, they are all outside. And I can see us drawing, you know, some of those people, drawing our people downtown because it is a dynamic place. You're right. The Civic Center is more static. You know, there are certain things that happen there, but for something like this, and as you can see, you know, this is a brick building. It's got a kind of old country flair to it. Uh, people don't have to dress up to go uh, there. They had a, a beer brewery inside there. I don't drink, but apparently a lot of people like beer. So that would be a draw for a lot of people, I'm sure. Um, but also there's a lot of, you know, food places and stuff like that. And to me, um, we have to be bold, you know. Times are changing now, and if we want to stay just very slow for and hope that somebody's going to come in and do something for us, I, I think we'll be waiting for a long time. But um, I'm really in favor of, of us really looking at doing something like this, which requires us to have a piece of land to do that. So, uh, and we have to be real careful about that, so I'm sure that will be explained to us. But uh, I'm really in favor of us uh, looking at some type of development. Thank you. Thank you. Member Nelson. I, too, have gone into places similar to this. Uh, one was in D.C., one was in Seattle, and one was in L.A. And you're right. There are people there. They're, they have a lot of food vendors, um, little food areas where you can sit and eat. You can get wine. You can get beer. Uh, you can grocery shop. It was a lot of fun. So I can see the kids might really like that. Between the three ideas, your idea and the Civic Center and my idea, which would be a playground downtown, um, I like my idea and your idea best. I think you like my idea. Well, yeah. and mine. Okay. And mine. <laughs> and mine. Um, well, I was reading the 2040 comp plan, and I went through it with a fine-tooth comb. One of the things it talks about is that all children's playground and greed space downtown. And that would uh, fit right in with, okay, let's, might not be able to do it this year, might not be able to do it next year. But let's, can we put on our uh, thinking caps and sort of start thinking that in the next two, three, four, or five years, it would be nice to have a playground downtown where, where the moms can bring their kids and say, hey, and then go have a coffee. Um, that would be, to me, that would be attract those, those younger people downtown. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, Diesel? Yes. 
Uh, I, too, have been in uh, a setting like that. Not until this past summer. I had gone on a, uh, my retirement trip. Yeah. Uh, went on a retirement trip, and we took a cruise in uh, some of the stops. I think it was in Bangor, Maine, and some of those areas up there in the northeast. And it seemed like every stop we had had one of these. That being said, I thought they were great. I can see the vision. I think it's outstanding. And we are the CRA, so that's what we're focused on. But I do think that, and, and I don't want this to be a negative because I really like it, period, the end. I like it. But I also want to point out that today, for my own benefit, I was kind of walking and going down to uh, Titus Landing on the side there, uh, outside of Hobby Lobby, and the little, little way there with the little shops. And we've got a lot of openings down there that aren't filled yet, and that concerns me. That's not CRA. I get that. But when I see that, I get a little nervous about going into a big thing that, you know, will some of them leave there to go there? Or I don't know. Now, that being said, I like it, and I think there's a real potential for it as we continue to grow, you know, uh, like we are. But uh, obviously, I think that there's going to be some people down there, not in the CRA, but down there saying, holy cow. Now you're going to suck some more people away from us, and we may not make it. I think we just have to be careful of where we're, you know, we got a thin deck. we got to be careful how many cards we deal to each side. So that being said, I was in some this summer. I loved them. It is like a, uh, I like the term, uh, you know, uh, a flea market on steroids. Uh, I'm, I'm a person in town that my wife is not a big fan of flea markets. I go down there to the old galley one all the time. I like it, but I think we have to take the whole picture in it when we get down there. But that doesn't mean don't take a look at it by any means. I think it's got some real promise. Thank you. Member Leedy? Uh, I just echo Member Diesel's, um, except is there any thought what you discuss on the public? How do you see the public-private partnership? What are you that's... Or, or what we what we spoke with with Member Jordan was to, to solicit to see if a um, developer would like to partner with the city, and I don't know. We will have to work out those details through the CRA board of what that looks like. So what we're asking for is somebody is somebody interested in doing something like this with the city. One of the things that uh, was mentioned earlier it said the one in Seattle. Um, who mentioned that? Somebody. Oh, you did. Yeah. Uh, of course, that's been there since 1920. That's the one where they... Yeah. I'd go down there every... That's where the original Starbucks started, but need to say. Um, but one of the things the city does, and you might put this in your equation, and I mentioned that to you last month, is they do a lot of up there, the city does, they buy the land and lease it to a developer. 99 year lease. So the developer gets financing because it's a long term lease. And that way the developer takes the risk and you bring a developer in that knows the business like we're talking about right now. So I'm just throwing that out for you guys. Thank you. Uh, Member Stokel. Thank you. Yep. Member Lee actually brought up some of the questions I had. Do we know with Winter Garden? Who owns this space? Is it a, a private? It's a private developer. So is the city doing anything? No. Okay. And there so. was a, quite a controversy when they went to develop this property because, okay. uh, as one of the members mentioned, the fear of drawing from the existing mm -hmm. businesses to blocks down, and mm -hmm. that that would be the focal point of the downtown after the downtown actually was developed and uh, vibrant again. Right. Okay. I, I like the idea. I really do. And I've been in places just like this. I just don't know at this point. Um, I'm a little hesitant of the city coming in and trying to facilitate. I'm okay with us like promoting it and trying to get a developer in there, but I don't know what role, I guess, us as a city would play. And then even more stringent, I guess, the CRA, um, just being mindful of that. So I, I like the idea. I just don't know if we're how it would look just quite yet or if we're there yet, but I'm definitely open to it. Thank you. Member Ball. Um, looking at the building there in Winter Garden, and somebody knows right off the top, is that a repurposed building or is that... No, it's new construction, new? but it was designed to look antique on the outside. Oh, it's okay. industrial floor. It's a simple construction. That's what it appears to be. So... Um, 
I guess at this point, uh, I get my, my overall reaction is that to be proactive is really a good thing, and you get development by going out and structuring uh, an outreach campaign to uh, those that might be interested with some idea of what it is you want to do. I don't have enough detail to judge if we really know what we want to do or if what we want to do is the appropriate thing to do with respect to other stakeholders interest and and how do you balance all that out so i think there is there is a winning strategy to this i just don't know what it is so i i don't want to discourage the idea uh of proceeding but i'm unclear of how we all get to to weigh in on what that request for development interest looks like and and what are the strategic objectives and what i i know it's complex about talking about specific properties but, um, you know, we have a downtown redevelopment plan, master plan, that has envisioned mixed-use residential retail on almost um, all of the underdeveloped parcels that we have. Not all of them. I mean, and the historic part of the downtown was, was preserved pretty much to, to remain historic. So, um, you know, things are... Are heating up there's a lot of competition for development investment and interest if you don't get proactive and go out and try to solicit it you know you're way at the end of the line because somebody doesn't even know what the opportunities are so I, I don't know if that's helpful to staff but uh, I think it was great I, I applaud the outreach and the initiative and I think the devil's in the details anything else sir Member Jordan. Um, just want to remind the council that before we got into the Titus Mall or Titus Landing, um, the North Bavar Economic Development Zone uh, was in partnership with a private developer. And there was some screaming from Searstown Mall people that they were going to take things away. You know, business is business. And business has a way of, you know, if you've got a good product, then the people are going to come. If you don't have a good product, some people won't come at all. I, I'm not fearful um, of us going out and, and being the lightning rod, as I said before. What I'm fearful of is we just sit around and wait for somebody else to do something for us, and nothing's going to happen. Um, the devil is in the, in the details, but I think the next step is to find out if there are any developers out there. Uh, Member Leedy has said some things. I don't want to comment on what he's saying, but he's, he's on the right track as far as what I was thinking about. But you'll be surprised, uh, even based on um, me going to some of the realtors and some of the developments that's going on uh, around town. It's amazing how people are coming into town and they're saying this is the hot spot. And because this is the hot spot, I think it's time for us to, you know, get burned a little bit ourselves and, and you know, get in the game for sure. We can't expect everyone to do everything for our, uh, our citizens, we need to do a few things ourselves. So with that being said, I, I really would like for the council to agree to allow the um, staff to go out and develop um, the RFP or RFQ. Actually, it's our RFI, I think. R -R -R -I, request for oh, I, you know, you started talking. I didn't know who was saying it. I'm it's sorry. It. I, I didn't use I didn't use my uh, my microphone. Be, I guess it would be an RDI request for development interest. Yeah. So or letter of interest, etc. Right. Know. And and I know Member Ball was saying, well, you know, we don't really know what we want. What we want is a uh, a developer to come in and say how he believes he can help us um, get to having our downtown maybe more vital by putting in these type things. And even we can say in the RDI that we're looking at something like what Winter Garden had um, and, and see what happens. I mean, it doesn't hurt to find out what's out there. Is that a motion? That is a motion. I have a motion. Um, I think you can get the information out of it. Yeah, we, we don't need a vote. We've got yeah. uh, advisability. Oh, okay. we, we've got the information we need. Okay. Well, we're, don't we want to vote on giving the advisability, though? You're fine, sir. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. I, I, I guess they got I'll take it. Take it back. <laughs> you want to go back to uh, B at this point? Uh, yeah. Anybody like to speak on le letter B? Yes, sir. Item B, uh, at the April 9, 2019 meeting of the CRA, requested 
that the Civic Center concept plans be put on the May 2019 agenda for discussion. A copy of the Civic Center presentations and cost estimate sheets for the concepts one and two are included, as well as the minutes uh, as a synopsis of the discussion of the previous meetings. Member Nelson. Um, I asked Mr. Larissa this the other day. My understanding is we have a, a Civic Center in New Smyrna Beach, and my understanding is it's not being used overly much. Yeah, our, that's our understanding too. It's underutilized. Um, they are, they actually have a, a, a f open market that's a block away that ha they envisioned when they built that 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 would move over there, but it's kind of stuck where it's at. So some some of the things that they envisioned yeah. early on have not really occurred yet. So at this point, I mean, you're talking three and a half million dollars more or less for something that is probably going to be underutilized. So I would hate to see, see us spend that money. On the other hand, I would like to see if anybody is interested in maybe looking at doing an all children's park downtown. Um, all children's being it would be a park that was accessible to all children regardless of their handicaps. Member Jordan. Um, actually, I'll agree with that because I think it will go a long ways um, for the RDI, and that could be something that we can put in the, the request that um, part of it will be inclusive of some kind of park like that that you were talking about. So I'm good with that. Cool. All right. Uh, Vice Mayor? I, I, Vice Chair. I would just say the same, that I'm uh, concerned about an underutilized building. Um, there was a time... Well, it, it was a, a time I could all remember well. In 16, when we ran, there was some talk about a ballpark, and our citizens were very concerned about such a thing. I can only imagine that we'd have more concern, especially when you relate the uh, New Smyrna issue. Yeah. And there was a time when it was first mentioned in 16-ish, um, when I think most of us, I will speak for myself, I was jumping up and down, here we go, we really want this, similar to you know, the, the thought that what we're looking at possibly down there in the downtown now was going to be something that was going to revitalize and pick it up. But I think that um, if we're not into the multi-use and the perpetual use, then we have a building that sits there a long time and looks good. And in some cases, um, located down there on Sandpoint, I know we had some concerns about taking away some of that riverfront property. So at this point, I'm kind of, I'm kind of slow to move on the uh, Civic Center at this time. Member Leedy. I'm kind of halfway with you guys. Uh, I, after the last meeting, I went out and I talked to a lot of people in town that I know and at various places. And to a person, everyone kind of agreed with you. We don't need another building. But they were warm to the idea uh, of an amphitheater, of a place to have outdoor concerts. Forget the building, but have... You know, and as I recall, maybe the director can tell me, one of the things in the presentation when we did, when we were doing it, was we have trouble, we would have trouble getting someone here because of our sound system. But if you had an updated sound system and a stage and, um, did I, am I characterizing that right or wrong or? The city doesn't have any equipment, sir. Uh, yeah, that right. Type. And um, we would we would defer to the county who would run our park for us on that. But weren't we talking about that? And one of the way concepts to attract did, local bands and music and. Yes, sir. One of the concepts did have an amphitheater in it. Right. Well, that's what I heard from the folks out there that they would be warm to that, but not a building, and because it would be a beautiful setting to have outdoor music and and. Uh, and I don't know if that's a scale down thing or how much that would cost or but if anyone's interested I'd like to see us just pursue ideas on that alone. Member Nelson. I would like to see how much it would cost. I mean Coco I went down for I've gone wow. down for a couple of concerts in the park down there and it's it's been nice. You're right on the river, you see in the river, you're hearing the concert. Music was way too loud for me. Um, the older I get, the uh, louder it seems. So, 
but it was it was it was nice. I don't know how much they spent on it, and, but I'd be curious to find out how much they spent on it. Mem Member Jordan. Yeah, I, I sound like a broken record, but that could be another thing that you could have as um, you know something for the developers to look at. You know, it'd be all encompassing. The, you know the. And, and actually, if you think about it, it could be something that is attached or detached according to where the land is. It was, it's just will be a place to go to have a good time for sure. And I love the idea of music. Music always brings people together for sure. Yeah. So. Member Ball. Well, I, I, would, I would endorse that, and I'll raise you one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, Actually, I want, to, I want to borrow from your playbook to um, at least put on the table a discussion about something I thought about shortly after I rejoined CRA, and that was the underutilized property at the, of the Upland building and the concern over the impact that occurred to that building from Hurricane Irma and, you know, the cost of rehabilitating it, but, you know, our community is used to that building being there, and and it does have um, it does have a function it can serve. And before you go on, that building is being demolished. Well, I heard that discussion, but I didn't know that decision had been made. Is that not true? So we let the contract. It's going to be demolished probably in the next two weeks. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that because mm. it's a missed opportunity. Mm. Wow. And I think I think when we're looking at if we're looking at not so much preserving that building as it is, but preserving the opportunity to use that site for active water recreation, and uh, really was more along the lines of what, what I had in mind, was even replacing that on that footprint with something that was more resilient to a storm surge and could be a place at our gate going across to the beach where you could have... Um, uh, you know, water sports that like along the lines of kayaking and sailing and all that stuff that's kind of there right now with a lot more visibility to that being available and maybe some concession services. Uh, I know that gets complicated with respect to commercial. I, I, it's not that I'm upset that the building might be demolished, although I think, you know, maybe we could have looked at some options. I, I thought, well, you could put something down there like a keys type of structure that are, that's up a little bit so that if, you know, you get a storm surge in, it goes underneath. Um, and look at how to use the site to mm -hmm. um, expand the recreational opportunities for use of the waterfront. If I may just clarify, the, the building was, would, there was no way to save that building. It hadn't been taken care of in decades, and it was rotten <coughs> on the inside. I personally went through it. Um, so... The building is going. The land certainly will still be there and could be used uh, in the way you suggested. Uh, so that will the land, of course, will will be there and will whatever you know we we will decide uh, or talk about what should go there. I hadn't thought about what you said, but I just want to let you know that the building isn't going to be there anymore. And and believe me, it was not a missed opportunity uh, because it it, it was a. Uh, amongst other things, just uh, full of uh, mold and all kinds of nastiness. So uh, it, it just had to go with you. When, when you look at development interest, if I, I'll just close out the conversation and say what, what I would have envisioned was the potential of, of a package deal where the building gets demolished and redeveloped, the site maybe get redeveloped. Uh, it's probably not too late to not to go ahead with your contract, but to consider doing something other than just grassing over that site and, and we have more of what we already have, which is wonderful, it's places to walk, but you've got active, um, long established active recreational uses there that are still underutilizing the site for what it could be used for. And no, nobody's talking about putting a marina there, but, but having something that's highly visible right at the causeway entrance to Play Linda Beach, and it's going to attract uh, young adults, young people down there, and middle age and even old guys, you know, to come down there and do things that um, are um, very easy to take advantage of there because of the boat ramps. Sir, just to, to follow up on that, the sailing club will retain the space there. 
and their boats will be um, there. They just don't have the building anymore. Okay. Member Stokel. Thank you. Is it possible with the current study that we've already completed just to pull the amphitheater portion out to see how much that would cost by itself? I just, I don't want to pay for another study personally. <laughs> yeah. So if that's doable, yeah. um, just to see how much that would cost alone, I'd be open to, um, and then. It, it is going to cost you money to do that. I Just to pull that one piece? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, so I don't, I'm probably not in favor of that then. Um, and that being said, I really would like to focus more on the downtown area, kind of what Member Jordan brought up. You brought up about the playground. I've seen yeah. some of those at the conferences I've gone to. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think as we bring more people into the downtown area, which is I think what we're all trying to do, I mm -hmm. think then we could progress into building that amphitheater rather than just maybe having it there utilized a couple times and not fully. Uh, that's my concern with the Civic Center, quite honestly. So if we are going to spend money, I'd prefer to keep it in that downtown area. That's kind of where I'm at. Not necessarily going out into the Sandpoint Park at this time. Member Leedy? Yeah, I, I, I take your point, but how much? I don't know. We'd have to I ask. I mean, a thousand bucks? I mean, we're we talking that a guy just make a so you're going from a design that's already been established to a separate structure. They're probably going to charge you to redesign it. Well, wasn't the structure on the plan? As I recall, the amphitheater was there, right? It was on the back side of the building, sir. Okay, so we couldn't find out, I think, what we were talking we, about is we didn't remove have a, the building, remove the other stuff, and now how, what do we got? We, What's it? we didn't have a standalone amphitheater, and that's what I'm hearing you say is you want a standalone amphitheater. So um, that the building itself had a, a, the capability of doing something on the back side of the building, which was more like a stage. So mm -hmm. I think we're if you want it redesigned, it's going to we we'll have to go back to okay. our. Okay. Uh, I th remembered there was the building and then the amphitheater with the stage was already done. Okay, based on, I think you have some cost estimates in your packet from, uh, that was given with the plans. And I think if you can break out, we can get an estimate. Uh, our, our engineer here, uh, public works director, tells us you're looking about $600,000 ballpark to do an amphitheater. That was with the stage and sound system and everything, as I recall, right? So, I don't know if it includes the sound system, but that would include a platform area for right. the stage yeah. and or the circular area. So, but I mean, that's a very ballpark figure pulling out. Some of those plans were a little more elaborate where they had uh, uh, a walkway going out into the water in one of them, um, so. So would you be against just bringing back the next meeting, just the plan with the amphitheater? Can that be done? Is that expensive? To I'm okay with that I, if it's free. <laughs> so here's, well, again, our architect's no longer under contract, so we're going to have to go back to them and, and do a how would we design this if you want a standalone amphitheater? If you look at, I think it's on page 57, <coughs> Kurt, it, it shows the stages right off of the backside of the building, like they're saying. So I just, I, I do think they'd probably have to redesign it, honestly. And I, I I don't know. I just don't know if we're there yet with the money. So I'd hate to invest the money for it to be tabled again. Okay. Do you have enough to, uh, uh, to Mayor, do something? Mayor, we have a card be... on this item. So what, I, what I've heard is that we're, we're kind of done with the Civic Center. Uh, perhaps in the future, after we go through um, Member Jordan's recommendation to put an RFQ out, that there could be potential for or added to that RFQ uh, potential for a, a uh, some kind of sound um, standalone mm -hmm. thing, perhaps in the downtown. Right. Mm -hmm. With an all children's program. Right. And that doesn't, that doesn't cost anything. Good. All right. Okay. <laughs> no cost. No cost. <laughs> we all all right on this? Yes. Okay. There's no action to be taken on this, so we don't accept cards. Since it was couched in the term of an advisability, I, w I would take a card on it. Okay.
Who's the card, please? Stan Johnston. Mr. Johnston, you have three minutes, sir. Uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Poinsett Avenue. Uh, I looked over a set of plans that I saw on the uh, agenda packet, and it showed the removal of the, the, of the Valicenti Pavilion. That's our pavilion right there at Sandpoint Park. That's where it's going to be. In other words, you could just demolish it. I don't know, but here's what I'm looking at is, is that, uh, and I've lived here for 47 years, and by God, we've already had like an amphitheater out there numerous times where somebody sets up the stage and has big bands and so forth like that. We're already doing that. It's just that we don't have a, we don't have a permanent stage and they put up a temporary stage like Woodstock. It was just all temporary. So uh, it just seems like uh, we're, we're, we don't need to have something that, that uh, in this case is that when we put something permanent out there, it's going to interfere with other activities, like if somebody's going to play soccer or whatever they're going to do, play football out there or whatever. So uh, I would like you to consider what we have, and you might even just add to it something and just have it. Uh, people can bring their own chairs just like they have been in the past. Um, so uh, uh, we already are doing that. Um, and that's going to be something. And they're talking about $3.5 million. Uh, we already and like we, we already have events there that people bring in temporary stages so i don't see that a big need for uh, spending three and a half million or more dollars for something that's going to take space away from when we when we have other events like for example when we have the the um, the fair come here the fair come in here or uh, i don't know do we still do the uh, river race Maybe we don't do that river race anymore. Well, we used to do the river race, and people had stages, and then we had the bikini contest. Uh, and that was uh, without having a, uh, an amphitheater. So uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that you uh, uh, not have something that, uh, uh, and we can still have bikini contests. We can still have them out there. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your consideration. God bless you. Uh, next is petitions and requests from the public. Would anybody like to speak? This evening on any, I see no one. Yeah. I'm here. Would you pass those out, please? Those pink ones. Uh, I'm speaking about. My name is Stan Johnson, 860 Point Set Avenue. And I'm speaking about some errors that the city has made. Big errors, expensive errors. And this pink card is about some errors that the city made. And as you see, it's, it has the four-way test on it. The, the rotary test, but it also has some information about what happened in 2014. 2014, I and some other people came up, objected to the city council approving a firm map, 2014. Well, the city went ahead and approved it, March, effective March 17th. Within two weeks, city manager and Woody Rice submitted to FEMA information that made the following changes. This is changing the firm map that was just, just, just accepted, okay. Now the new firm map recognizes two large, two large ponds. It recognizes three dams that weren't there. That, I mean, the, 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 the dams are there, but they weren't recognized on the firm map. It recognizes the relocation of a floodway. It recognizes two sealed sets of calculations that opposed the firm map elevation for Baker subdivision. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll say number five. Number five, it, 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 uh, it, it discloses errors and deception and dishonesty by some city, of, city staff. Let me go back to number four. The previous one was the Baker subdivision. It, it recognizes two sets of calculations, one done in 1997, another done in 2010, and also there was one done in 1985 that all oppose the uh, firm. Uh, number six, it does not it recognizes the need to change the firm map. And then we did a revision to that, that at the cost of $70,000, no, $80,000 is what I believe. And uh, in this particular case, um, I believe the city would have not had to pay that if they had just recognized it in the beginning rather than waiting until two weeks after the, f the firm map was accepted. <laughs> And also, it recognizes uh, uh, greater than 40 homes that were in Baker sub that were in the flood zone. Now they're taken out of the flood zone, and that was after 31 years of being in the flood zone. So, the the Lomar that the city accepted as a change 
was done in, 19, in 2016. How, and it brought it back to the same calculated position of 18.9 feet above mean sea level, NGVD, uh, as, was, as was calculated in 1985, as which information was withheld from the public, from me, and from homeowners for 31 years. So uh, this is a serious issue, and I, I would like you to consider this uh, this this uh, this card that that has. To, Your I got time is up, sir. May I have more time? I see no one making that motion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, executive director's report. Yes, sir. The executive uh, director's report is for your information, and uh, the last page of that is the uh, spreadsheet that you all have. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer questions on my report. Okay. Anything else from council? If not, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. The next meeting will start at 7 p.m. <laughs>